round of inquiries about the three stages that help identify IBMers. Stay tuned for an explanation of the three stages and how you can easily identify which stage you're in. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and press the notification bell to be notified whenever a new IB Myositis episode has been published. If you like this type of information presented in this 107th episode, please press the thumbs up and like button. First of all, for all you newly diagnosed IBMers, there is a functional rating scale survey that you can complete at home to determine your functionality changes over time with your inclusion body myositis. This survey, better known as the IBM FRS, is a simple 10 question multiple choice survey that can be self-administered by the IBMer or caregiver or both. The survey selection answers you choose in each of the 10 subject areas are scored from 0 to 4 depending on which answer you feel is closest to your current state of functionality. When completing all 10 subject areas, all you have to do is add up the point values of all the questions to come out with a functionality score. This score will result in a total anywhere from 40 or full functionality to a minimum of zero or with little or no physical functionality of your skeletal muscles. Newly diagnosed IBMers will usually score in the upper 30s whereas a score in the single digits means you've been on this journey for a while and in most areas your functionality has been decimated. I will leave directions in the information section of this video to where you can find and copy the IBM Functional Rating Scale Survey. The Functional Rating Scale was developed by Drs. Barron and Amato in about 2008 using a similar survey designed years earlier to serve patients with ALS. Dr. Barron was the previous director at the University of Kansas Medical Center's Neurology Park Department and is now at the University of Missouri in Columbia and has a legacy of leadership in the myositis medical community. Dr. Amato is also a well-established IBM expert and well-known in the myositis community. I think Kevin Dooley's Cure IBM website defines the Barron Amato FRS advantages the best way. Ease of use. The IBM FRS does not require any expensive equipment or specialized training and it can be completed in a few minutes. Sensitivity. Studies have shown that the IBM FRS is sensitive to small changes in a person's conditions when compared with other measures such as manual muscle testing, measurements of hand grip, and so on. Reliability. Since the IBM FRS was first described in 2008, several studies have validated its reliability and accuracy. The relativity of the functional rating scale in terms of stages has been repeated in several medical papers written by medical professional entries by six doctors in the Journal of Neurology, Dr. Kabayishi, and eight of his colleagues in a Science Direct article, Dr. Heather Dunlap, and two of her colleagues in a 2014 paper in the Canadian Journal of Neurological Sciences, Fred Cox, Ph.D. Head, U.S. Healthcare Economics Outcome Research in the Journal of Neurology, even the information sheet for general practitioners of 2015 mentions the stages in conjunction with inclusion body myositis. An article by Dr. Stephen A. Greenberg entitled Inclusion Body Myositis, Clinical Features and Pathogenesis makes mention several times of the various stages of IBM. The term stages is used by medical professionals to identify progression or deterioration of most types of conditions or diseases. A simple infection can be categorized in one of five different stages. We have all heard of stages in reference to cancer diagnosis where there are five designated stages from stage 0 to stage 4 with only abnormal cells that have not spread to adjacent tissues in stages 0 to stage 4 where the cancer has spread to distant parts of the body. The recent coronavirus and various stage designations including up to three stages and some medical professionals have identified up to five stages of coronavirus. Some of the papers mentioned previously list the IBM stages as initial, medium, and end stage, 
whereas us as a patient group would rather refer to them as simply stage 1, 2, and 3, as we all realize that once we hit that third stage, it does not necessarily mean the end for any of us. In August of 2019, I had an in-person discussion with Dr. Barron when he attended our Wichita kit meeting regarding the stage designations that could be used by people diagnosed with IBM, and he concurred with the simple labeling of the three IBM stages as stage 1, 2, or 3. So, what is the significance of being able to label our IBM condition as stage 1, 2, or 3? Actually, there is no special significance to any of the labels other than to help communicate your current condition when speaking to other IBMers. Everyone realizes that a person with an FRS score of 34 or higher is in the initial stage of their IBM journey, whereas anyone with a score of 15 or lower would be considered in the advanced stage of IBM, and it's most certainly easier to communicate which stage you're in rather than writing or explaining a long litany each time about where you are on your IBM journey. The three IBM stage designations could have other uses beyond inner IBM or communication. Imagine if physical therapists making an exercise video for IBMers would preface their presentation with a recommended stage designation to inform their viewers the exercise difficulty levels. Imagine if health insurance providers would consider stage 2 and 3 for certain assistive devices instead of misidentifying all IBMers as those still capable of attending the myositis conference, or maybe considering the elevating seat power chair not a convenience feature for stage 3. Or how about hiring outside caregivers based on the stage designation we are experiencing? But for now, if you new IBMers hear or read a fellow IBMers say they're in stage 1, stage 2, or stage 3, you can better approximate at what point of their IBM journey he or she is at as a result of their functional rating scale survey results. The FRS can be found in the file section of all popular Facebook group pages along with an Excel spreadsheet to help track your FRS survey score year over year. If you cannot access the Excel spreadsheet on one of the Facebook groups, email me at ibmyositis at gmail.com for a copy. If you're new to IBM, you have now learned about the stage designations and the functional rating scale survey. If you're an old-time IBMer and have been using the stage designations over the years, continue to use them as well as renewing your functional rating scale score at least once a year. I found it helpful to use my birthday as a reminder to update my FRS score. Thank you for watching this 107th episode on the IB Myositis YouTube channel dedicated to people with inclusion body myositis. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel and hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming episodes. Feel free to share this video and all IB Myositis episodes with your family, caregivers, medical professionals, and friends. The IBM condition needs all the advocacy we can get.